Hey guys, so this is take two of our galvanized pumpkin class. So what I have going on right now is I just got all my stuff out of the bag. Let me move this over a little bit. Got all my stuff out. Well, actually, okay, so I took out the um, picture frame, the paper. I do have the bag with the raffia and the little sunflower. I left my little wire in here and I have my little galvanized pumpkins. I have my hot glue stick. Hot glue stick. That's what this is. My glue stick and I have my hot glue gum plugged in already. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get my paints ready and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is what we're making. Um, this is the one I made in the last video that I just could not find. I went to finish editing it this morning, and it's just poof gone. So, you'll have a different word. Um, some of you chose thankful, some of you chose blessed. So, that doesn't matter. We're going to paint it like this, but this is what we're going for. And just remember, too, you can paint your pumpkins any color you want. This is just what I'm doing. So, let me set that aside. So, our first step what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue down our paper you can do this two ways you can do it put the hot um, glue stick on the paper or right on here so I'm gonna just go directly on on the sign and I'm really gonna load it up So I'm just going to put it on everywhere as close to the edge as I can. Lots of glitter on there. Got some on the edge, which isn't really a big deal but you can see I'm loading it up okay oh I need a little bit in the corner there sorry if you see my head okay I'm just gonna before I did go ahead and put my paper in here I made sure that it fit I did my best to cut the paper ahead of time so it would fit, but I did notice when I made this one that I did have to trim this side just a teeny bit. Oops. So next, I just take a bone folder that I have. You can use a credit card, scraper, anything. I mean, you could literally even use a paint stir stick or a piece of wood that you have cut and I just go and really smooth it in there make sure it's stuck down okay so I'm gonna set this aside and next we're going to paint our metal pumpkins and again, like you don't have to paint your pumpkins. If you want to leave them galvanized, you can. If you want to add, you know, just a little bit of shading or if you like this and just want to add a little bit of color, you could water down your paint and do it that way. Um, so what I do since I paint a lot of pumpkins and I usually stick with these colors is I have these little party cups I think they're called from Dollar Tree and I have my colors just pre-mixed in there so this is plaster chalk paint by Waverly and I added in some of this antique parchment by Apple Barrel just to give it a little bit more color so to start with, I always start with my lightest color because I really don't clean my brushes off. And I think because I did water this down last night to do another project, I'm going to add some more chalk paint to it so I don't have to do as many coats. And I'll 
add some more of this. Give me a second. I just got to mix this up. Okay. And then I'm just going to paint my pumpkin. Just make sure you get the whole thing, stem included. I mean, you don't have to paint the stem with this because we are going to be painting only one of them. So you only need to paint one of the stems brown. Or, like I said, if you like the galvanized look, leave it. This one, this stem is going to be covered. So what I did is I went ahead and I did one coat of this on all three of my pumpkins. And then on one of the bigger ones, you're going to do two coats, possibly three, depending on the coverage you're going for. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually had to do three coats on this because my paint was pretty watered down. And like I told you before, I only did one coat on these. So now my brush is still I still have paint on my brush from painting this and we're gonna start shading it right away so all I do is I go into this is a khaki color by Apple Barrel I'm gonna dip in there and I'm gonna go right in those creases I'm gonna go back into my original color and you don't want a lot of paint. You just want some because we're going to blend this out now. So I'm just going to blend and layer. And I do bring it over into the middle and the sides of the pumpkin because I even though you're blending there can still be that harsh line so I like to try to bring that over Need a little bit more of that okay now to me the sides not matching so I'm gonna go back in it's really, you just play around, you blend and layer. Okay. So, I'm going to now go into this. I have like two different colored browns. And I just kind of go in both. And I'm going to go in my creases again, staying with that shape of the pumpkin. Try to blend it out. And then I bring it over a little bit so it's not too harsh. And I'm going to do this side. Go back in my original color very lightly. And now I just got to do this last crease. And now I'm happy with the way that looks. So... I'm going to let that dry. When I did my original coats, I did take my heat gun and I dried them because I'm impatient. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry naturally. Let's move on to our bluish. Well, for me, it's going to be blue. It doesn't necessarily have to be for you. It's like a bluish green. So I'm going to, again, I'm not cleaning off my brush. Go in here. I'm going to paint this guy. And 
Now, because I did put that base coat with my cream color, I only need to do the one coat to cover that. So now I'm going to go in with this brown again, the khaki color. And I'm going to go right in those creases. I usually do two at a time. And then I blend it. Try to soften it up a little bit. Now it's easier with this one because it, the, my, my base coat paint is still wet. My cream colored was dry. But I did want that one to pop out a little bit more. And if you put too much, you can always go back with your original color. So, now I'm going to go into my darker color. And I'm going to make this pop out even more. Very lightly. some of this blue this time. I'm going to kind of wipe some of this off because there was too much paint. And then I'm just blending Okay, now for me, I need to fix this side, so I need this dry. If you can see this, I like this side, but this is too harsh of a line. So I'm going to fix that. kind of match it up over here. Really, the most you're going to see on this one is the bottom. So I'm just going to leave this one like this for now. And now we'll go to our orange. Let me close this up. Now again, I'm not going to clean off my brush. So this orange is pretty watered down. So I do need to mix that up. Now this top, this smaller pumpkin, is the one you're going to see the whole thing. So, go in, give this a nice coat. And again, it doesn't have to be orange like mine. This is just what I'm going for. Okay, that's good. I am going to dry this just a tad because it is pretty wet, not fully. And then again, I'm going to go in with this brown, and this is a little bit smaller. So I'll just go in. It's a little harder to hold. I hope you guys can see this, but you're literally going to do the same thing that you just did 
on the other two pumpkins. Now I do have an orange mixed with a brown, and I don't want too much on my brush. I want to go very lightly. So I'm going to go in those creases. Try not to be too heavy. And like I said, I usually just do the two at a time. And I like to bring it to the raised part. Let's go into this crease. And this one. Try to blend that the best that I can. Okay. Now this one I'm going to dry. Sorry about that noise. Let me close these up. So our next step is I like to add some highlight to my pumpkins. So what I'm going to do is go back into my original color, my plaster, with the parchment, anti-parchment. And I'm going to very, very lightly, again, I didn't clean my brush. You can wipe it off a little bit. Is pretty loaded but I'm not gonna wash it very lightly I'm just gonna very lightly give it some highlight just kind of at the edges and drag it towards the middle So the top and the bottom, and then I just kind of drag it towards the middle, like that. So I'll show you again on here. Again, not cleaning my brush. There's a little bit of orange in it, that's okay. Give it some... Highlight. Ooh, that was a little much, but that's okay. This one will be covered up top, but I still like to do it. And this one. And I just go with the shape of the pumpkin the whole time I'm painting, painting it. Okay. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll come right back for our next step. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take my Antique Wax by Waverly. You can use any brown color originally i used the truffle by waverly but again any brown color works and i'm going to 
paint my stem and what I do is I get some on the top like that I guess it's so and then I just like drag it down I'm gonna have to do a couple coats on it but I kind of feather it out at the bottom So that's what it will look like. Do it your way, like I said. Um, later on, I'll put another coat on. But for now, again, I'm going to set this in my thing to wash my brush. And let's move on to our next step. So, what I like to do next is go ahead and glue on my pumpkins so i'll take my my word since it doesn't have the two um two words like my original that's in the photo for the kit this is just one so we have to figure out it's going to need to be lower so that it works so i'll probably put it here i'm just gonna play with it to figure out where it'll look right and i think that looks about good so so i don't forget i'm gonna put a little mark right there okay so there is this little lip because this was actually um, a galvanized pumpkin garland. So you could flatten that. Don't rip it off. I did that with one. And where it is soldered on here, you'll have a hole right here. I guess for this one and this one, it really wouldn't matter. But this one, it would. So what you can do is if you have foam tape or foam squares you can use that or you can literally use cardboard so i'm gonna use cardboard and i'm just gonna cut strips and glue it on because i want to be able to get this to be even with that which you could flatten it a little bit and now that's pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead i think what i'll do is put just a little strip so that there's more area to glue to and then i am gonna go ahead and glue it down try to find my middle it up a little bit make sure that's straight okay now again I need just a tiny bit of cardboard under this part And then I just keep playing around with it. So I have a spot to glue to. Hopefully there's tape on this part. Hopefully that won't matter but I should probably peel it off okay so that's pretty good I'm gonna go ahead put some glue on here and I'm not being light with my glue at all and I'm going to glue this one down on top 
and I keep lifting it up to check to make sure it's straight. And there's tape out of this part too. Oh, that's my one of my kitties. That's Tasia. And there's Tasia. Okay, I need another piece. Which I would have to go digging for that. Oh, actually I do have a piece of cardboard right here. Sorry if you can hear the sirens. And I just keep playing. It's down a little bit low. See if I put this on here, if that will help. Nope. Let's see. You might have to add. Yep. Okay. So I have to add two layers of cardboard for this. And again, you know, this is, I'm just using what I have. Let me see. I'm going to add a little piece of foam square. Because I need it raised up just a teeny bit. More. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of glue here and there. Try to get it centered. It's kind of nice because you can use this middle as your guide on your pumpkin. But again, I'll raise it up. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up quick again, and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so next we're going to paint our word. You can stain it or paint it, or if you like it plain, leave it plain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint mine mineral by Waverly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two coats, and then I'll be right back. Okay. So I did two coats, and now what we're going to do is I'm using a smaller brush, and I'm going to go in on my edges. So I'm going to start at the edge and kind of drag it in. So you're literally distressing those edges. So I just put it on the edge and lightly drag it. I don't want to cover the whole thing. You just want to... Get the edges and drag it so you can see i don't know how well you can see it but right here my middle is still that mineral color so i'm going to go through and do the entire thing i might do two coats i might just do one depending how it dries if i might want it to be a little bit brighter so i'm gonna do that and i'll be right back Okay, I wanted to hop back on quick before I finished my letters. I wanted to show you why I do this. You can see that without that, it looks okay. But when I do the edges, it really hops, hops, <laughs> helps the word pop. And especially against that background, we want it to pop out. So I'm going to finish doing this. I just wanted to show you that. 